Hello brothers and sisters, today is another bright new day that the Lord has made and uh, we are going to rejoice in it and be glad in it as we study His Word. And uh, in today's Bible study lesson, we're going to be answering uh, quite a confusing uh, question that you always asked and as we always do, we try to answer the most difficult Bible questions by the power of God and uh, doing some research and reading his word. So, this is one question which is always asked. If aborted babies go to heaven, then why is abortion wrong? If aborted babies go to heaven, then why is abortion wrong? Hope you're seated in a comfortable seat and uh, you have a pen and a paper or a notebook and your Bible by your side and uh, let's get started now we who defend the sanctity of life sometimes we face very confusing questions why do you say abortion is wrong if babies go to heaven and and uh, the Bible says that, you know, that this happens, they go to heaven. And people say that for sure babies are innocent, they'll go to heaven. Then why do you say abortion is wrong then? That question often has a follow-up. And I quote, Aborted children never have a chance to grow up and uh, reject Jesus. Therefore, by your own reasoning, abortion fills heaven and keeps people out of hell. Is that a good thing? This is the second thing that most people usually ask. And uh, considering abortion as a merciful or merciful way of sending babies to heaven, it's a, it's a very invalid option for Christians for several reasons. First and foremost, if we believe that heaven and hell are real, then we have to believe that there is a God and God is real. And if there is a God, we need to care what he said on the subject of abortion. By that measure alone, we cannot justify killing the unborn, an action that God expressly forbids. Look at Leviticus 20 from verse 1 to 5. What the Bible says, it gives us a picture of how God feels on such kind of instances. Right? Let me let me open it for you here so that you can be able to see. Let me let me look at my Bible here. Leviticus 20. Uh, verse 1 to 5 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, and that giveth any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones, and I will set my face against that man, and I will cut him off from among his people because he has given of his seed unto Molech to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name and if the people of the land do any ways hide their eyes from the man when he giveth of his seed unto Molech and kill him not then I will set my face against that man and against his family and I will cut him off and all that go a whoring after him to commit wardom with Molech from among their people. You see how God feels? Do you see? Let's also see uh, the book of uh, 2 Kings 24, verse 2 to 4. And the Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldees and the bands of the Syrians, and the bands of the Moabites, and the bands of the children of Ammon, and sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake, he spake by his servants, the prophets. Surely at the commandment of the Lord came this upon Judah, to remove them 
out of his sight for the sins of Manasseh according to all that he did and also for the innocent blood mark that word innocent blood that he shed for he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood which the Lord would not pardon so we see God has does not justify killing the unborn or God does not justify shedding of blood and of course God commands us not to commit murder this is one of the commandments in Exodus 20 verse 13 thou shall not kill because God knows the children or that child even before birth he says very well in uh, Jeremiah 1:5 before I formed thee in thy belly I knew thee And before you came forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation so God knows you he knows every child even before they are formed in the womb and in the Mosaic law he prescribed punishment for killing unborn child think about this in Exodus 21 verse 22 to 25 if men strive and hurt a woman with child so that her fruit depart from her and yet no mischief follow he shall be surely punished according to the woman's husband will lay upon him and he shall pay as the judges determine and if any mischief follow then thou shall give thy life for life you shall give life for life eye for eye tooth for tooth hand for hand foot for foot burning for burning wound for wound stripe for stripe you see abortion is never an act of mercy it is always an act of shedding innocent blood and god hates people who shed innocent blood he says in proverbs 16 Uh, uh Proverbs 6 verse 16 to 17 these six things does the Lord hate yea seven that are an abomination unto him a proud look a lying tongue hands that shed innocent blood you see this one is mentioned so we have to understand the first reason that we reject the idea of a mercy motivated abortion is fairly simple because God say not to we should not kill regardless of what else we may think god told us that killing the innocent is wrong period just as uh, with a parent child relationship the only thing we ultimately need to know is that the father has said no okay the father has said no god is our father is the father of those children And the second reason that abortion cannot be justified as a merciful act is that uh, we are not absolutely sure what happens to those who die before they are born. We have no many good reasons. We have Okay, I may say we have many good reasons to think that uh, they'll be in heaven, but we cannot really say is yes or no because nobody has come and told us, "Yeah, I was there. I saw the kids." <laughs> you see? because we don't have an explicit biblical proof we only speculate um, you know across bible verses so we can definitely say that aborting a soul will rescue it from hell and we dare not take such an awful risk with the souls of other people because with both of those reasons in mind we can pose a useful statement god didn't just kill Cain before he sinned that fact doesn't tell us exactly why we should not abort a child for mercy's sake but it does not tell us that uh, god does not see killing to prevent sin as a viable option and a third reason that we cannot justify abortion on the basis that it sends babies to heaven involves eternal rewards what about rewards now for them an aborted child has been denied the chance to serve god in uh, this life and uh, and gain rewards in heaven a child killed in the womb is being denied the chance to honor god in, in this world and earn rewards in the world to come 
the chance to serve God is one of the things abortion steals from a human being. And logically the attitude that abortion is merciful in that it sends babies straight to heaven would lead us to kill all children and born and not. After all if they really if it is really better for them to be dead then why should we let them live? We should just send them to a better place. You see anyone who takes seriously the idea that babies in the womb should be killed to send them to heaven would logically have to favor the killing of every single child that's in his opinion and at the edge of accountability because following the same rationale he'll also be inclined to kill other believers to prevent them from sinning anymore before they get to heaven and given that god is a god of logic and given that he specifically tells us to protect the weak and innocent because he tells us this uh, in proverbs uh, 31:8 to 9 he says open thy mouth for the dumb in the course of all such are appointed to destruction open thy mouth judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and needy so god uh, wants us to protect the weak and the innocent and god wants us to have children think about genesis 128 and god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth god loves children and he wants the best for them he wants to see them as a blessing and also he wants us to see them as a blessing not a curse Psalms 21:27 verse 4 and 5 the bible says as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man so are children of the youth happy is the man that has his quiver full of them they shall not be ashamed but uh, they shall speak with the enemies in the gate so we cannot justify abortion on any moral grounds whatsoever because a most abortion is a murder of the unborn and we can't mitigate the heinous nature of the act by injecting some perverse sense of human mercy into the equation no this is this is not what god intends us to do And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. As always, you can always uh, download these uh, productions so that you can listen to them later or share to your friends and family and uh, you know close people on uh, WhatsApp and other places. And of course, uh, you can favorite and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you can always know whenever we post a new bible study lesson hope to see you in the next one